the Black Stallion returns. Hey, bike farmers, thanks for clicking in. We got ourselves a big old greasy Cannondale here. This is straight out of the era when I first started working on bikes. I'm thinking early 90s, 91, 92. Um, it's got the Suntour Express shifters on it, or drivetrain, I guess, um, which is kind of neat. A nice novel design. You know, it's typical Suntour where they were onto something really good right before they failed. I don't know. Um, it's kind of a shame that Suntour went away. I think they had some really good uh, product development teams working for them and had a lot of things going and they just didn't win. But anyway, we're gonna get this thing working great. I don't think it's gonna give us a whole lot of trouble, but I've been wrong before. Um, these Cannondales are kind of quirky. They're handmade in America, aluminum bikes. Um, I don't know if they're the first to do it. They're, you know, they're kind of OG, right? Um, so this is an old school Cannondale, um, pretty neat bike. Um, the guy's already, you know, done the super upright everything. He just likes it how it is. I told him I could make a few more tweaks and improvements, but he's like, I just want to see if I get back into biking again. So I love jobs like these. These are people that used to ride their bikes and uh, took it seriously at one time, took a little break and trying to get back on it. So let's throw it up in the repair stand and get started. It's always a good idea to start with a fresh coat of grease in your seat tube. So we'll do that here quick. And uh, spray a little bit of tri-flow on the skewer. Helps things move freely, get a good clamp. Yeah, you can still see there's still original grease. This has been pretty tight and dry. Let's put some air in these tires. First thing, actually this tire is on backwards. Let's flip that before we put air in it, but we can get air in this one. I like to put air in the tires first thing, because then by the time you get done, you know if there's any leaks. So I'm gonna go with caution here, fill it about halfway. Make sure nothing's gonna blow up on me. Bring it up to pressure slowly. I just make them firm. So the tire, tires have a direction to them, so that's pointing forward. So I just want to make sure that it's on the wheel the right way. It's not a real safety issue. I don't believe that it really makes a difference. It's just an aesthetic thing. It's just a design, a general practice. It's just the way things are done, I suppose. It's not a hard rule. I get a lot of comments on the bikes where I don't do this. People are like, tires on backwards. Like, it doesn't matter. But I guess it sort of does. So, again, we fill it up like halfway just to make sure we're not gonna blow anything up and cause accidental urination. Even when I make sure, sometimes it happens. I mean, the blowing the tire up, not the accidental urination. Okay, we're just gonna set that aside. Give it a proper cleaning in a minute. Yeah, so this bike is old enough that there aren't lawyer lips on the end of this fork. Don't need to do anything with that skewer. 
It's a pre-lawsuit bike. Oh yeah, he wanted these uh, toe clips taken off. Yeah, I'm not a fan of toe clips either. I don't even think they should be called toe clips, but they are called toe clips. The naming with uh, bike pedals, where these are toe clips and then the bikes that actually have clip bin or clips are called clip list. It's all totally backwards, very dumb. I don't make the rules. I don't establish the conventions, but you know, we all gotta speak the same language. So we're not too concerned with this hardware. It's pretty rusty. Never gonna reuse it. I doubt that the customer even wants these things back. So we just let it fall to the ground. And we'll suck it off the floor when the time comes. All right. So way up here are these shifters. They're a novel mechanical design. They don't have all the springs and pawls and stuff that the Shimano ones do. So they don't have quite the same delicious haptics as Shimano stuff. But the way one lever goes in and the other comes out, there's a lot of room for uh, fine tuning and trimming on the fly, which I, I've always appreciated as a mechanic. I just think that the general rider isn't gonna really want that. So that's probably one of the reasons why Shimano won the battle is Shimano's just more user-friendly. It's more dummy-proof. You can see how that lever comes back. I don't know, I've just always liked this design, but it doesn't feel as good. It falls into that category. As a mechanic, I like it. As a rider, probably not as much. Okay, I'm gonna disconnect some cables here. Loosen the cable all the way. And then I'm gonna push in the derailleur. That gives me a lot of slack on that cable, enough where I can try to fish these cables out. This ferrule is stuck in there. Needs a little persuasion. Got a little flathead screwdriver here. And we'll just tap, tap, tap a. What's that from? Tap a, tap a, tap a. It's gotta be a Simpsons thing. It's like a Lisa goes to dance. There we go. Think they're all gonna give me trouble? Nope, that one slid right out. Now with the front shifter in the lowest gear, pull that derailleur out. Grab the cable back here. Move everything out of frame. This is not easy on this bike. It's just not shifting. I'm not doing what we want to do. Oh, and the ferrule doesn't come out. Good God. Oh. With everything loose, we can kind of get at the cables here. And I just drop a little bit of lube, let gravity draw the lube down into the housing. I use Tri-Flow. Almost exclusively. It's always been a favorite of mine. It just works great. Okay, and then, uh, whoop, wrong one. I'm gonna grab the front brake cable housing and kind of pull that down. It only goes so far, but it should be enough to at least get some lube in there. You can kind of work it. Help, help the gravity draw the lubrication down into the system. Yeah, that's nice and smooth. Now, the rear brake cable is routed along the top here. And Cannondale, terrible design. They have these little plastic doohickeys um, 
that break. And you can get them now, but for a while they were just not even available. Um, and they're, they're all breaking, that's all very brittle. Um, this one is already broken, so there's a zip tie holding it there. So I don't wanna mess with all that. <clears throat> so I'm gonna avoid it and just use the gravity method to lube this cable too. Everything's pretty clean on this bike. Or well, okay, so the bike is filthy, but it's just dust. So it's clean in terms of rust and like real gunk. So we're gonna flip the bike over and lube that cable. here I'm just dropping a little bit of lube on the hinge on the lever might as well do the front one while things are upside down and I can see it good and gravity's on our side all right let's yeah that feels really good pretty 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 good okay the cables are lubed so with all the cables not in their homes, it gives you really good access to all the tubes on the frame. So grab your furniture polish or your expensive bike polish of choice. Spray it down and give her a good wipe. I'm gonna spray a little one step behind my brake calipers here, or cantilevers, but whatever you wanna call them. Try to get some lube in there. This one's pretty sticky. Yeah, I can feel it freeing up a little. There we go. So that one's moving pretty loose. That one's way better now. Just kind of clean it up and get some lube in there. There's grease in there. You just wake it back up. It just got grungy. Same thing back here with the rear brakes. Just drop a little in there, work it. Back and forth and up and down and just work it. That really helps things along. It will give these brakes a nice snappy feel and you can adjust the tension better to get much more even tension. This one's fighting back a little bit and I can tell it's got a different bolt. So I'm not the first guy to be struggling with this. We'll get her, we'll get her working good. Get these wheels up in the stand, and clean them off and true them. So that hub is really loose. Check it, see if I can figure it out. The first thing I do is I, I grab the lock nut on each side and try to back it off with my fingers. Nothing's moving. And the next thing I'm gonna try is put a wrench on this side and then grab a wrench on the other side and just take the whole system and tighten it a little bit. That actually feels pretty good. So it's kind of a cheater method. But if I can avoid taking this freewheel off and going down that whole rabbit hole, it's kind of next level for the service that we're doing here. 
square little tri flow behind the freewheel. And then I'm gonna just a little bit just to kind of free things up in there. Yeah, much improved. Much, much improved. I didn't tighten the hub all the way. It's still got a little bit of play. We're gonna let the, the skewer compress everything together to set that preload in the frame. You know, the, the quick release skewers are a cam lever and it actually changes the width of the axle and it compresses the whole bearing system together. So it's part of the preload. So when you adjust a hub, you don't adjust it totally tight with a quick release cup and cone bearing system like this. Just leave it a little loose and let the cam take care of the rest and then it's got a proper preload. Things don't wear out as quickly. If you adjust your hub so it's tight and smooth and just right and then hit that cam, it squishes it in a half a millimeter and then things will start grinding down the road. It's too tight. Too tight means premature wear, things will wear out. Then you got bigger fish to fry. And sometimes it takes a couple of iterations to get it just right. And sometimes it doesn't matter. Good enough is good enough, but this is kind of a cool, old, special Sun Tour replacement parts. Aren't a dime a dozen. Gonna be hard to find a replacement for this. We try to do the best we can with what we got within reason. Just dropping a couple drops of lube over here on the skewer. All right, a couple of spots on this wheel which is to be expected. And actually the hub feels a little loose yet. Give it another tweak. One more. That should do it. Yeah. Yeah, if it's too loose, then it's hard to true the wheel because everything's flopping around. So there's just a tiny bit of movement here, but not enough to throw off my gauges, both physical and cerebral. Just a couple of quick spots. I use a, an old spoke to hold one side of the truing stand over one of my little fingers here. I don't know what you call that, gauges. It's gonna be hard to get this one perfect, but definitely making improvements here. Tires are holding air, that's good. We got that going for us. We're just gonna repeat the process for the front wheel. a little bit of grungy here on this cable so I just take a bit of steel wool and wipe the cable takes the grungy right off a lot of grungy in the nether regions here cables hooked up the best we can there we go yikes something's going on here sure what's happening here. I'll take a closer look at that. Man, God, that's impossible. Can't do the shift cable trick with these sun tour front derailleur or front shifters. Maybe it's just this bike. I don't know what's going on. Get this front brake hooked up here. See how we're doing. 
Ooh, front brake is looking really good. No adjustment necessary, just that lube is all it needed. Feels good as new, better than new. I'm gonna lube this chain quick. And the derailleur. And this derailleur. I mean, that was way easier. Okay. So theoretically, it should just slide right in there. Sure the, there we go. Housing wasn't in the ferrule. We're good now. Yeah, I'm telling you, clean, lube, and adjust. That's all there is to it. Everything's moving, everything's working again. Yeah, the chain and um, derailleurs, all the lube and gunk and everything that was built up in them was preventing them from moving freely and it just, nothing was working. So just that little bit of one step on everything woke it all back up. Just kicking off some dust here. And then uh, I'm gonna, I think we'll try to tackle this rear brake. Oh, bottom bracket needs an adjustment too. So we'll do those two things quick. So, we're only pulling from one side, kind of a weird angle, and there's no tension adjustment screws. So what we do is we kind of force flex this side to add some tension to it, and I'm making sure that everything's moving smoothly. I drop a little more lube down in there. Okay. And reconnect things. And there, yeah, we just added a little bit to this side, and this pad seems to be rubbing on the tire. So I think we gotta move this pad. So before I move the pad, I'm gonna drop some tri-flow on all these washers. These are like conical washers that adjust the angle of things. Just if that little bit of lube is really gonna help. I'm also gonna check to make sure that the wheel's in the dropout right. Just to make sure that it actually is the pad. Yep, it's just misaligned. So I'm just gonna drop it a centimeter, I mean a millimeter. pretty good now. There's other tricks you can do by kind of pushing this over and crimping the cable a little bit and all of it can help the system find its balance but there's not much more I can do to improve that situation than what I've already done so I'm gonna leave it because I'm pretty satisfied with how that's feeling and it's 4,000 times better than it was when we started. Let's hit that bottom bracket. All right, the old bottom bracket. This is my trusty Hosan bottom bracket block ring pliers. So sometimes you can just take this tool, you kind of back up the lock ring, and then grab it with your pliers. Okay, and if you squeeze super hard, no. Sometimes if you squeeze super hard, you can compress the ring on the cup enough where you can turn the cup but not with this one. So grab your green spanner, which is the low profile one, and hopefully get enough purchase to tighten it just a smidge. That's probably too much. This can be tricky with the crank arm and everything, getting in behind here. Let's see here, I can't see what I'm doing. It's extra hard to do with the wanting to get the good camera angle. There we go. It's all your fault, guys. So this is kind of the same thing where when you crank down on this lock ring, a lot of times it tightens everything. So there's a happy medium. Okay, so it's loose right there. It's 
I really don't want to overhaul this bottom bracket. It's just not worth it. Um, this customer, you know, I mean, I'd have to charge for it. And they just aren't going to gain anything from it. I probably would if I was reselling this bike. You know, I have to kind of make decisions like that along the way. I was watching one of my luthier channels the other day and I was working on a classic guitar. And you know, there's that fine line between keeping things original and replacing things for play playability. And it really depends on who it is, who the player is. And those decisions can be tough sometimes. But that is still feeling smooth and properly adjusted. Way more better. Here's a little trick. If you just spray a little bit of tri-flow on your pedal spindles, the rust goes away. If this was my bike, I would call it the Black Stallion. I think it's a good name for it. Not much I can do to improve that shifting. That's delicious. You can hear the shifter. It's got a totally different sound than the Shimano. But when you get it working, it works great. And it is working. Onward. Missing a valve cap here. Grab my rag and just kind of do some last minute buffing of things. This is a really great example of somebody who's got a perfectly good bike. At some point they spent the time and effort to make it comfortable for how they're going to be using it. And it's sat, but I think they're recently retired, but something has inspired them to try riding bikes again. And this is a good way to get started. I'm going to give them the best possible experience I can for the least amount of money. And I told them modern bikes have come a long way and really made things more simple, lighter, Everything just feels better, they're easier to ride. I think the experience is better, and I do believe that if you can afford it, upgrading, well, I'm not a big fan of that work, but it would be kind of, it would be an, a worthy upgrade to spend the money on a more modern bike than this one. But there's certainly nothing wrong with this one. This one is perfectly acceptable for recreational use. It's durable, it's serviceable, it's functional, it's practical, and it's relatively clean. So that's it. The Black Stallion returns. I really love projects like this. This is why I do what I do. Hopefully this guy rejuvenates his love of cycling with this freshly tuned up bicycle. If you like this content and want to see more, you got to support the channel. And the best way to do that is by watching all the way through, which if you're hearing this, you probably already have. And the next thing you can do is like, you can subscribe. I love getting the super thanks. You can become a member of the channel, do a monthly donation. I post things there every once in a while. I'm getting better at it. And of course, above all, the number one thing you can do is click that notification bell so you and your bike can stay tuned.